2012 phenomenon from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia, at en.wikipedia.org. As read by Wikipedia user A. Parrot, based on the current version of the article as of 431 UTC, 3rd December 2012. The 2012 phenomenon comprises a range of eschatological beliefs according to which cataclysmic or transformative events will occur on 21st December 2012. This date is regarded as the end date of a 5,125-year-long cycle in the Mesoamerican Long Count calendar. Various astronomical alignments and numerological formulae have been proposed as pertaining to this date, though none have been accepted by mainstream scholarship. A New Age interpretation of this transition is that this date marks the start of time in which Earth and its inhabitants may undergo a positive physical or spiritual transformation, and that 2012 may mark the beginning of a new era. Others suggest that the 2012 date marks the end of the world or a similar catastrophe. Scenarios suggested for the end of the world include the arrival of the next solar maximum, an interaction between Earth and the black hole at the center of the galaxy, or Earth's collision with a planet called Nibiru. Scholars from various disciplines have dismissed the idea of such cataclysmic events occurring in 2012. Professional Mayanist scholars state that predictions of impending doom are not found in any of the extant classic Maya accounts, and that the idea that the Long Count calendar ends in 2012 misrepresents Maya history and culture. Astronomers and other scientists have rejected the proposals as pseudoscience, stating that they conflict with simple astronomical observations and amount to, quote, a distraction from more important science concerns, such as global warming and loss of biological diversity, end quote. The article contains ten sections with several subsections. These sections are Section 1 Mesoamerican Long Count Calendar Section 1.1 Apocalypse Section 1.2 Objections Section 1.3 Prior Associations Section 2 Mayan References to Pactun 13 Section 2.1 Tortuguero Section 2.2 La Corona Section 2.3 Dates beyond Pak Tun 13. Section 3. New Age Beliefs. Section 3.1. Origins. Section 3.2. Galactic Alignment. Section 3.2.1. Procession. Section 3.2.2. Mysticism. Section 3.2.3. Criticism. Section 3.3. Time Wave Zero and the I Ching. Section 3.4, Other Concepts. Section 4, Doomsday Theories. Section 4.1, Other Alignments. Section 4.2, Geomagnetic Reversal. Section 4.3, Planet X, or Nibiru. Section 4.4, Other Catastrophes. Section 5, Public Reaction. Section 6, Cultural Influence. Section 7, see also. Section 8, notes. Section 9, citations. Section 10, references. Section 1, Mesoamerican Long Count Calendar. December 2012 marks the conclusion of a Pactun a time period in the Mesoamerican Long Count calendar which was used in Central America prior to the arrival of Europeans. Although the Long Count was most likely invented by the Olmec, it has become closely associated with the Maya civilization, whose classic period lasted from 250 to 900 AD. The writing system of the classic Maya has been substantially deciphered, meaning that a corpus of their written and inscribed material has survived from before the European conquest. Unlike the 52-year calendar round still used today among the Maya, the long count was linear rather than cyclical, and kept time roughly in units of twenty. Twenty days made a winal, eighteen winals, 360 days, made a tun, 
twenty tunes made a katun, and twenty katuns, a hundred and forty-four thousand days, or roughly three hundred and ninety-four years, made up a b'aktun. Thus, the Mayan date of eight three two ten fifteen represents eight b'aktuns, three katuns, two tunes, ten winals, and fifteen days. Section one point one Apocalypse. There is a strong tradition of world ages in Mayan literature, but the record has been distorted, leaving several possibilities open to interpretation. According to the Popol Vuh, a compilation of the creation accounts of the Quiche Maya of the colonial era highlands, we are living in the fourth world. The Popol Vuh describes the gods first creating three failed worlds, followed by a successful fourth world in which humanity was placed. In the Maya long count, the previous world ended after thirteen pactuns, or roughly five thousand one hundred and twenty-five years. Note A. The number thirteen plays an important role in Mesoamerican calendrics. The Tzolk'in, or sacred calendar, was divided into thirteen months of twenty days each. The Mayan Mai cycle consisted of thirteen katuns. The reason for the number's importance is uncertain, though correlations to the phases of the moon and to the human gestation period have been suggested. End note. The long count's zero date was set at a point in the past marking the end of the third world and the beginning of the current one, which corresponds to 11th August 3114 BC in the proleptic Gregorian calendar. Note B. The Mayan calendar, unlike the Western calendar, used a zero. End note. Note C. Rather than zero, 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 the Mayan long count represented the date of creation as thirteen, zero, 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 zero. End note. This means that the fourth world will also have reached the end of its thirteenth p'aktun, or Mayan date thirteen, zero, 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 on 21st December 2012. Note D. Most Mayanist scholars, such as Mark Van Stone and Anthony Aveni, adhere to the GMT, Goodman Martinez Thompson, correlation with the long count, which places the start date at 11th August 3114 BC and the end date of Pactun 13 at 21st December 2012. This date is also the overwhelming preference of those who believe in 2012 eschatology, arguably, Van Stone suggests, because it falls on a solstice and is thus astrologically significant. Some Mayanist scholars, such as Michael D. Coe, Linda Schell, and Mark Zender, adhere to the Lounsbury, or GMT plus 2, correlation, which sets the start date at 13th August and the end date at 23rd December. Which of these is the precise correlation has yet to be conclusively settled. End note. In 1957, Mayanist and astronomer Maud Worcester Mackinson wrote that, quote, The completion of a great period of thirteen p'aktuns would have been of the utmost significance to the Maya. End quote. In 1966, Michael D. Coe wrote in The Maya that, quote, There is a suggestion that Armageddon would overtake the degenerate peoples of the world and all creation on the final day of the thirteenth Pactun. Thus, our present universe would be annihilated in December 2012, when the great cycle of the long count reaches completion. End quote. Note E. Coe's initial date was 24th December 2011. He revised it to 11th January A.D. 2013 in the 1982nd edition of his book, not settling on 23rd December 2012 until the 1984 third edition. The correlation of Pactun 13 as 21st December 2012 first appeared in Table B2 of Robert J. Scherer's 1983 revision of the fourth edition of Sylvanus Morley's book, The Ancient Maya. End note. An image accompanied this section of the article, with the caption, The oldest surviving manuscript of the Popol Vuh, dated to 1701. Section 1.2. Objections. 
Coe's interpretation was repeated by other scholars through the early 1990s. In contrast, later researchers said that, while the end of the 13th Pak Tun would perhaps be a cause for celebration, it did not mark the end of the calendar. Quote, there is nothing in the Maya or Aztec or ancient Mesoamerican prophecy to suggest that they prophesied a sudden or major change of any sort in 2012, end quote, said Mayanist scholar Mark Van Stone. Quote, the notion of a great cycle coming to an end is completely a modern invention, end quote. In 1990, Mayanist scholars Linda Schell and David Friedel argued that the Maya, quote, did not conceive this to be the end of creation, as many have suggested, end quote. Susan Milbrath, curator of Latin American art and archaeology at the Florida Museum of Natural History, stated that, quote, we have no record or knowledge that the Maya would think the world would come to an end, end quote, in 2012. Sandra Noble, executive director of the Foundation for the Advancement of Mesoamerican Studies, said, quote, for the ancient Maya, it was a huge celebration to make it to the end of the whole cycle, end quote. And, quote, the 2012 phenomenon is a complete fabrication and a chance for a lot of people to cash in, end quote. Quote, there will be another cycle, end quote, said E. Willis Andrews V, director of the Tulane University Middle American Research Institute. Quote, we know the Maya thought there was one before this, and that implies they were comfortable with the idea of another one after this. End quote. Commenting on the new calendar found at Shultun, one archaeologist said, quote, The ancient Maya predicted the world would continue, that 7,000 years from now things would be exactly like this. We keep looking for endings. The Maya were looking for a guarantee that nothing would change. It's an entirely different mindset. End quote. Several prominent individuals representing Maya of Guatemala decried the suggestion that the world ends on Pak Tun 13. Ricardo Cajas, president of the Colectivo de Organizaciones Indígenas de Guatemala, said the date did not represent an end of humanity, but that the new cycle, quote, supposes changes in human consciousness, end quote. Martin Sakalshot, of the office of the Procurador de los Derechos Humanos, Guatemala's Human Rights Ombudsman, PDH, said that the end of the calendar has nothing to do with the end of the world or the year 2012. Section 1.3 Prior Associations The European Association of the Maya with Eschatology dates back to the time of Christopher Columbus, who was compiling a work called Libro de las Profecias during the voyage in 1502 when he first heard about the Maya on Guanaja, an island off the north coast of Honduras. Influenced by the writings of Bishop Pierre Daly, Columbus believed that his discovery of most distant lands, and by extension the Maya themselves, was prophesied and would bring about the apocalypse. End times fears were widespread during the early years of the Spanish conquest as the result of popular astrological predictions in Europe of a second great flood for the year 1524. In the early 1900s, German scholar Ernst Fürstemann interpreted the last page of the Dresden Codex as a representation of the end of the world in a cataclysmic flood. He made reference to the destruction of the world and an apocalypse, though he made no reference to the 13th Aktun, or 2012, and it was not clear that he was referring to a future event. His ideas were repeated by archaeologist Sylvanus Morley, who directly paraphrased Fustemann and added his own embellishments, writing, quote, Finally, on the last page of the manuscript is depicted the destruction of the world. Here, indeed, is portrayed with a graphic touch the final all-engulfing cataclysm, end quote, in the form of a great flood. These comments were later repeated in Morley's book, The Ancient Maya, the first edition of which was published in 1946. Section 2. Mayan References to Bak Tun 13 It is not certain what significance the classic Maya gave to the 13th Bak Tun. Most classic Maya inscriptions are strictly historical and do not make any prophetic declarations. Two items in the Mayan classical corpus, however, do mention the end of the 13th Pak Tun. 
Torre de Guero Monument 6 and La Corona Hieroglyphic Stairway 12. Section 2.1 Torre de Guero The Torre de Guero site, which lies in southernmost Tabasco, Mexico, dates from the 7th century AD and consists of a series of inscriptions mostly in honor of the contemporary ruler Bahlam Achao. One inscription, known as Torre de Guero Monument 6, is the only inscription known to refer to Pak Tun 13. It has been partially defaced. Sven Gronemeyer and Barbara MacLeod have given this translation. It will be completed the 13th Pak Tun. It is four Achao, three Kankin, and it will happen a seeing. It is the display of Polon Yokte in a great investiture. Image. The Torre de Guero monument connects the end of the 13th Pak Tun with the appearance of Polon Yokte Kuh, shown here on the vase of seven gods. Very little is known about the god Polon Yokte. According to an article by Mayanists Marcus Eberl and Christian Prager in British Anthropological Reports, his name is composed of the elements nine, Okte, the meaning of which is unknown, and God. Confusion in classical period inscriptions suggests that the name was already ancient and unfamiliar to contemporary scribes. He also appears in inscriptions from Palenque, Usumacinta, and Lamar as a god of war, conflict, and the underworld. In one stele he is portrayed with a rope tied around his neck, and in another with an incense bag, together signifying a sacrifice to end a cycle of years. Based on observations of modern Mayan rituals, Gronemeyer and MacLeod claim that the stele refers to a celebration in which a person portraying Polon Yokte was wrapped in ceremonial garments and paraded around the site. They note that the association of Polon Yokte with Pak Tun 13 appears to be so important on this inscription that it supersedes more typical celebrations such as quote, erection of stele, scattering of incense, end quote, and so forth. Furthermore, they assert that this event was indeed planned for 2012 and not the 7th century. Mayanist scholar Stephen Houston contests this view by arguing that future dates on Mayan inscriptions were simply meant to draw parallels with contemporary events, and that the words on the stela describe a contemporary rather than a future scene. Section 2.2 .2, La Corona in April and May 2012, a team of archaeologists unearthed a previously unknown inscription on a stairway at the La Corona site in Guatemala. The inscription, on what is known as Hieroglyphic Stairway 12, describes the establishment of a royal court in Calakmul in 635 AD, and compares the then-recent completion of 13 Katuns with the future completion of the 13th Aktun. However, it contains no speculation or prophecy as to what the scribes believed would happen at that time. Section 2.3 Dates Beyond Pak Tun 13 Mayan inscriptions occasionally mention predicted future events or commemorations that would occur on dates far beyond the completion of the 13th Pak Tun. Most of these are in the form of distance dates, long count dates together with an additional number, known as a distance number, which when added to them makes a future date. On the west panel of the Temple of Inscriptions in Palenque, a section of text projects forward to the 80th 52-year calendar round from the coronation of the ruler Kainich Hanab Pakal. Pakal's accession occurred on 99248, equivalent to 27th July 615 AD in the proleptic Gregorian calendar. The inscription begins with Pakal's birth date of 989130, 24th March 603 AD Gregorian, and then adds the distance number 10.11.10.5.8 to it, arriving at a date of 21st October 4772 AD, more than 4,000 years after Pakal's time.
Another example is Stela I at Koba, which marks the date of creation as 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 0, 0, 0, 0, or 19 units above the Paktun. According to Linda Schell, these 13s represent, quote, the starting point of a huge odometer of time, end quote, with each acting as a zero and resetting to one as the numbers increase. Thus, this inscription anticipates the current universe lasting at least 20 to the 21st power times 13 times 360 days, or roughly 2.687 times 10 to the 28th power years a time span equal to two quintillion times the age of the universe as determined by cosmologists. Others have suggested, however, that this date marks creation as having occurred after that time span. In 2012, researchers announced the discovery of a series of Mayan astronomical tables in Shultun, Guatemala, which plot the movements of the moon and other astronomical bodies over the course of 17 paktuns. Section 3. New Age Beliefs Many assertions about the year 2012 form part of a non-codified collection of New Age beliefs about ancient Maya wisdom and spirituality. Archaeoastronomer Anthony Aveni says that while the idea of balancing the cosmos was prominent in ancient Maya literature, the 2012 phenomenon does not draw from those traditions. Instead, it is bound up with American concepts such as the New Age movement, millenarianism, and the belief in secret knowledge from distant times and places. Established themes found in 2012 literature include, quote, suspicion towards mainstream Western culture, end quote, the idea of spiritual evolution, and the possibility of leading the world into the New Age by individual example or by a group's joined consciousness. The general intent of this literature is not to warn of impending doom, but, quote, to foster countercultural sympathies and eventually socio-political and spiritual activism, end quote. Aveni, who has studied New Age and Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, SETI, communities, describes 2012 narratives as the product of a disconnected society, quote, Unable to find spiritual answers to life's big questions within ourselves, we turn outward to imagined entities that lie far off in space or time, entities that just might be in possession of superior knowledge. End quote. Section 3.1 Origins In 1975, the ending of Paktun 13 became the subject of speculation by several New Age authors who asserted it would correspond with a global transformation of consciousness. In Mexico Mystique, The Coming Sixth Age of Consciousness, Frank Waters tied Coe's original date of 24th December 2011 to astrology and the prophecies of the Hopi, while both Jose Arguelles in The Transformative Vision and Terence McKenna in the invisible landscape, discussed the significance of the year 2012 without mentioning a specific day. In 1983, with the publication of Robert J. Scherer's revised table of date correlations in the fourth edition of Morley's The Ancient Maya, each became convinced that 21st December 2012 had significant meaning. By 1987, the year in which he organized the Harmonic Convergence event, Arguelles was using the date 21st December 2012 in The Mayan Factor, Path Beyond Technology. He claimed that on 13th August 3113 BC, the Earth began a passage through a galactic synchronization beam that emanated from the center of our galaxy, that it would pass through this beam during a period of 5200 tuns, Maya cycles of 360 days each, and that this beam would result in total synchronization and galactic entrainment of individuals, quote, plugged into the Earth's electromagnetic battery, end quote, by 13000, 21st December 2012. 
he believed that the Maya aligned their calendar to correspond to this phenomenon. Anthony Aveni has dismissed all of these ideas. Section 3.2 Galactic Alignment There is no significant astronomical event tied to the long count's start date. However, its supposed end date has been tied to astronomical phenomena by esoteric, fringe, and New Age literature that places great significance on astrology. Chief among these astronomical ideas is the concept of the galactic alignment. Section 3.2.1 Precession In the solar system, the planets and the sun lie roughly within the same flat plane, known as the plane of the ecliptic. From our perspective on Earth, the ecliptic is the path taken by the sun across the sky over the course of the year. The twelve constellations that line the ecliptic are known as the zodiac, and annually, the sun passes through all of them in turn. Additionally, over time, the sun's annual cycle appears to recede very slowly backward by one degree every seventy-two years, or by one constellation every two thousand one hundred and sixty years. This backward movement, called precession, is due to a slight wobble in the Earth's axis as it spins, and can be compared to the way a spinning top wobbles as it slows down. Over the course of 25,800 years, a period often called a great year, the sun's path completes a full 360-degree backward rotation through the zodiac. In Western astrological traditions, precession is measured from the March equinox, one of the two annual points at which the sun is exactly halfway between its lowest and highest points in the sky. Presently, the sun's March equinox position is in the constellation Pisces and is moving back into Aquarius. This signals the end of one astrological age, the age of Pisces, and the beginning of another, the age of Aquarius. Similarly, the sun's December solstice position, in the northern hemisphere the lowest point on its annual path, in the southern hemisphere, the highest, is currently in the constellation of Sagittarius, one of two constellations in which the zodiac intersects with the Milky Way. Every year, on the December solstice, the Sun and the Milky Way, from the surface of the Earth, appear to come into alignment, and every year, precession causes a slight shift in the Sun's position in the Milky Way. Given that the Milky Way is between 10 degrees and 20 degrees wide, it takes between 700 and 1400 years for the sun's December solstice position to precess through it. It is currently about halfway through the Milky Way, crossing the galactic equator. In 2012, the sun's December solstice will fall on 21st December. Section 3.2.2 .2, Mysticism Image the Milky Way near Cygnus, showing the lane of the Dark Rift, which the Maya called the Shibalba Bay, or Black Road. Mystical speculations about the precession of the equinoxes and the sun's proximity to the center of the Milky Way appeared in Hamlet's Mill, 1969, by Giorgio de Santillana and Erta von Deschend. These were quoted and expanded upon by Terence and Dennis McKenna in The Invisible Landscape, 1975. The significance of a future galactic alignment was noted in 1991 by astrologer Raymond Mardix, who asserted that the winter solstice would align with the galactic plane in 1998 or 1999. He wrote that this event, quote, only occurs once each 26,000 year cycle and would be most definitely of utmost significance to the top flight ancient astrologers, end quote. Astrologer Bruce Schofield notes, quote, The Milky Way crossing of the winter solstice is something that has been neglected by Western astrologers, with a few exceptions. Charles Jane made a very early reference to it, and in the 1970s Rob Hand mentioned it in his talks on precession but didn't elaborate on it. Ray Mardix later made a point of it, and after that John Major Jenkins, myself, and Daniel Giamario began to talk about it. End quote. Adherence to the idea, following a theory first proposed by Monroe Edmondson, alleged that the Maya based their calendar on observations of the Great Rift, or Dark Rift, a band of dark dust clouds in the Milky Way which, according to some scholars, 
the Maya called the Shibalba Bay, or Black Road. John Major Jenkins claims that the Maya were aware of where the ecliptic intersected the Black Road, and gave this position in the sky a special significance in their cosmology. According to Jenkins, precession will align the sun precisely with the galactic equator at the 2012 winter solstice. Jenkins claimed that the classical Maya anticipated this conjunction and celebrated it as the harbinger of a profound spiritual transition for mankind. New Age proponents of the galactic alignment hypothesis argue that, just as astrology uses the positions of stars and planets to make claims of future events, the Maya plotted their calendars with the objective of preparing for significant world events. Jenkins attributes the insights of ancient Maya shamans about the galactic center to their use of psilocybin mushrooms, psychoactive toads, and other psychedelics. Jenkins also associates the Shibalba Bay with a world tree, drawing on studies of contemporary, not ancient, Maya cosmology. Astronomers such as David Morrison argue that the galactic equator is an entirely arbitrary line and can never be precisely drawn, because it is impossible to determine the Milky Way's exact boundaries, which vary depending on clarity of view. Jenkins claims he drew his conclusions about the location of the galactic equator from observations taken at above 11,000 feet, 3,400 meters, an altitude that gives a clearer image of the Milky Way than the Maya had access to. Furthermore, since the sun is half a degree wide, its solstice position takes 36 years to process its full width. Jenkins himself notes that even given this determined location for the line of the galactic equator, its most precise convergence with the center of the sun already occurred in 1998, and so asserts that, rather than 2012, the galactic alignment instead focuses on a multi-year period centered on 1998. There is no clear evidence that the classic Maya were aware of precession. Some Maya scholars, such as Barbara MacLeod, Michael Grof, Eva Hunt, Gordon Brotherston, and Anthony Aveni, have suggested that some Mayan holy dates were timed to processional cycles, but scholarly opinion on the subject remains divided. There is also little evidence, archaeological or historical, that the Maya placed any importance on solstices or equinoxes. It is possible that only the early Mesoamericans observed solstices, but this is also a disputed issue among Mayanists. There is also no evidence that the classic Maya attached any importance to the Milky Way. There is no glyph in their writing system to represent it, and no astronomical or chronological table tied to it. Section 3.3 .3, Time Wave Zero and the I Ching Image a screenshot of the Time Wave Zero software. Time Wave Zero is a numerological formula that purports to calculate the ebb and flow of novelty, defined as increase over time in the universe's interconnectedness or organized complexity. According to Terence McKenna, the universe has a teleological attractor at the end of time that increases interconnectedness eventually reaching a singularity of infinite complexity in 2012, at which point anything and everything imaginable will occur simultaneously. He conceived this idea over several years in the early to mid-1970s whilst using psilocybin mushrooms and DMT. McKenna expressed novelty in a computer program which purportedly produces a waveform known as Time Wave Zero, or the Time Wave. Based on McKenna's interpretation of the King Wen sequence of the I Ching, an ancient Chinese book on divination, the graph appears to show great periods of novelty corresponding with major shifts in humanity's biological and sociocultural evolution. He believed that the events of any given time are resonantly related to the events of other times, and chose the atomic bombing of Hiroshima as the basis for calculating his end date of November 2012. When he later discovered this date's proximity to the end of the 13th Aktun of the Maya calendar, he revised his hypothesis so that the two dates matched. 
The 1975 first edition of The Invisible Landscape refers to 2012, but no specific day during the year, only twice. In the 1993 second edition, McKenna employed Scherer's date of 21st December 2012 throughout. Section 3.4 Other Concepts Image Pic de Bougarache, Camp sur Agli, France a target of esoterics who believe that some great transition will occur in 2012. In India, the guru Kalki Vagavan has promoted 2012 as a deadline for human enlightenment since at least 1998. Over 15 million people consider Vagavan to be the incarnation of the god Vishnu and believe that 2012 marks the end of the Kali Yuga, or degenerate age. In 2006, author Daniel Pinchbeck popularized New Age concepts about this date in his book 2012, The Return of Quetzalcoatl, linking Pak Tun 13 to beliefs in crop circles, alien abduction, and personal revelations based on the use of hallucinogenic drugs and mediumship. Pinchbeck claims to discern a, quote, growing realization that materialism and the rational empirical worldview that comes with it has reached its expiration date. We are on the verge of transitioning to a dispensation of consciousness that's more intuitive, mystical, and shamanic. End quote. Beginning in 2000, the small French village of Bougarache, population 189, began receiving visits from esoterics, mystic believers who have concluded that the local mountain, Pic de Bougarache, is the ideal location to weather the transformative events of 2012. In 2011, the local mayor, Jean-Pierre Delord, began voicing fears to the international press that the small town would be overwhelmed by an influx of thousands of visitors in 2012, even suggesting he may call in the army. Quote, We've seen a huge rise in visitors, end quote, Delord told the Independent in March 2012. Quote, Already this year, more than 20,000 people have climbed right to the top, and last year we had 10,000 hikers, which was a significant rise on the previous 12 months. They think Pic de Bougarache is un garage à ovni, a garage for UFOs. The villagers are exasperated. The exaggerated importance of something which they see as completely removed from reality is bewildering. After 21st December, this will surely return to normal. End quote. Section 4. Doomsday Theories Image Sagittarius A star, taken by the Chandra X-ray Observatory A far more apocalyptic view of the year 2012 that has spread in various media describes the end of the world or of human civilization on that date. This view has been promulgated by many hoax pages on the Internet, particularly on YouTube, as well as on several cable TV channels. Section 4.1 Other Alignments Some people have interpreted the galactic alignment apocalyptically, claiming that when it occurs it will somehow create a combined gravitational effect between the Sun and the supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy, known as Sagittarius A star, thus creating havoc on Earth. Apart from the fact noted above that the galactic alignment already happened in 1998, the sun's apparent path through the zodiac as seen from Earth does not take it near the true galactic center, but rather several degrees above it. Even if this were not the case, Sagittarius A star is 30,000 light-years from Earth and would have to be more than 6 million times closer to cause any gravitational disruption to Earth's solar system. This reading of the alignment was included on the History Channel documentary Decoding the Past. However, John Major Jenkins has complained that a science fiction writer co-authored the documentary, and he went on to characterize it as, quote, 45 minutes of unabashed doomsday hype and the worst kind of inane sensationalism, end quote. 
Some believers in a 2012 doomsday have used the term galactic alignment to describe a very different phenomenon proposed by some scientists to explain a pattern in mass extinctions supposedly observed in the fossil record. According to this hypothesis, mass extinctions are not random, but recur every 26 million years. To account for this, it suggests that vertical oscillations made by the Sun on its 250 million year orbit of the galactic center cause it to regularly pass through the galactic plane. When the Sun's orbit takes it outside the galactic plane which bisects the galactic disk, the influence of the galactic tide is weaker. However, when re-entering the galactic disk, as it does every 20 to 25 million years, it comes under the influence of the far stronger disk tides, which, according to mathematical models, increase the flux of Oort cloud comets into the inner solar system by a factor of four, thus leading to a massive increase in the likelihood of a devastating comet impact. However, this alignment takes place over tens of millions of years and could never be timed to an exact date. Evidence shows that the Sun passed through the plane bisecting the galactic disk only three million years ago and is now moving farther above it. A third suggested alignment is some sort of planetary conjunction occurring on 21st December 2012. However, there will be no conjunction on that date. Multi-planet alignments did occur in both 2000 and 2010, each with no ill result for the Earth. Jupiter is the largest planet in the solar system, larger than all other planets combined. When Jupiter is near opposition, the difference in gravitational force that the Earth experiences is less than 1% of the force that the Earth feels daily from the Moon. Section 4.2 Geomagnetic Reversal Another idea tied to 2012 involves a geomagnetic reversal, often incorrectly referred to as a pole shift by proponents, possibly triggered by a massive solar flare that would release an energy equal to a hundred billion atomic bombs. This belief is supposedly supported by observations that the Earth's magnetic field is weakening, which could precede a reversal of the north and south magnetic poles. Most scientific estimates, however, say that geomagnetic reversals take between 1,000 and 10,000 years to complete and do not start on any particular date. Furthermore, the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration now predicts that the solar maximum will peak in May 2013, not 2012, and that it will be fairly weak with the below average number of sunspots. In any case, there is no scientific evidence linking a solar maximum to a geomagnetic reversal, which is driven by forces entirely within the Earth. Instead, a solar maximum would be mostly notable for its effects on satellite and cellular phone communications. David Morrison attributes the rise of the solar storm idea to physicist and science popularizer Michio Kaku, who claimed in an interview with Fox News that a solar peak in 2012 could be disastrous for orbiting satellites. Section 4.3 Planet X, or Nibiru Some believers in Doomsday in 2012 claim that a planet called Planet X, or Nibiru, will collide with or pass by Earth in that year. This idea, which has appeared in various forms since 1995, initially predicted Doomsday in May 2003, but proponents later abandoned that date after it passed without incident. The idea originated from claims of channeling of alien beings and has been widely ridiculed. Astronomers have calculated that such an object so close to Earth would be visible to anyone looking up at the night sky. Section 4.4 .4, Other Catastrophes Image The Pleiades, a star cluster whose supposed influence is sometimes tied to the 2012 phenomenon. Author Graham Hancock, in his book Fingerprints of the Gods, interpreted Coe's remarks in Breaking the Maya Code as evidence for the prophecy of a global cataclysm. 
filmmaker Roland Emmerich would later credit the book with inspiring his 2009 disaster film, 2012. Other speculations regarding Doomsday in 2012 have included predictions by the WebBot Project, a computer program that purports to predict the future using internet chatter. However, commentators have rejected the programmer's claims to have successfully predicted natural disasters, which web chatter could never predict, as opposed to human-caused disasters like stock market crashes. Also, the 2012 date has been loosely tied to the long-running concept of the photon belt, which predicts a form of interaction between Earth and Alcyone, the largest star of the Pleiades cluster. Critics have argued that photons cannot form belts, that the Pleiades, located more than 400 light-years away, could have no effect on Earth, and that the solar system, rather than getting closer to the Pleiades, is in fact moving farther away from them. Some media outlets have tied the fact that the red supergiant star Betelgeuse will undergo a supernova at some point in the future to the 2012 phenomenon. However, while Betelgeuse is certainly in the final stages of its life and will die as a supernova, there is no way to predict the timing of the event to within a hundred thousand years. To be a threat to Earth, a supernova would need to be as close as twenty-five light-years to the solar system. Betelgeuse is roughly six hundred light-years away, and so its supernova will not affect Earth. In December 2011, NASA's Francis Reddy issued a press release debunking the possibility of a supernova occurring in 2012. Another claim involves alien invasion. In December 2010, an article, first published in examiner.com and later referenced in the English-language edition of Pravda, claimed, citing a second digitized sky survey photograph as evidence, that SETI had detected three large spacecraft due to arrive at Earth in 2012. Astronomer and debunker Phil Plate noted that by using the small angle formula, one could determine that if the object in the photo were as large as claimed, it would have had to be closer to the Earth than the Moon, which would mean it would already have arrived. In January 2011, Seth Shostak, chief astronomer of SETI, issued a press release debunking the claims. Section 5. Public Reaction The phenomenon has spread widely since coming to public notice, particularly on the Internet. Hundreds of thousands of websites have been posted on the subject. Ask an Astrobiologist, a NASA public outreach website, has received over 5,000 questions from the public on the subject since 2007, some asking whether they should kill themselves, their children, or their pets. In May 2012, an Ipsos poll of 16,000 adults in 21 countries found that 8% had experienced fear or anxiety over the possibility of the world ending in December 2012, while an average of 10% agreed with the statement, quote, the Mayan calendar, which some say ends in 2012, marks the end of the world, end quote, with responses as high as 20% in China, 13% in Russia, Turkey, Japan, and Korea, and 12% in the United States, where sales of private underground blast shelters have increased noticeably since 2009. At least one suicide has been directly linked to fear of a 2012 apocalypse, with several more anecdotally reported. A panel of scientists questioned on the topic at a plenary session at the Astronomical Society of the Pacific contended that the Internet has played a substantial role in allowing this doomsday date to gain more traction than previous similar panics. In Brazil, the mayor of the city of São Francisco de Paula, Desio Cola, Rio Grande do Sul, has mobilized the population to prepare for the end of the world by stocking up on food and supplies. In the city of Corguinho, in the Mato Grosso do Sul, a colony is being built for survivors of the tragedy. In Alto Paraiso de Goiás, the hotels also make specific reservations for prophetic dates. On 11th October 2012, in the Brazilian city of Teresina, 
Police interrupted what was believed to have been an attempted mass suicide by up to a hundred members of a cult headed by self-proclaimed prophet Luis Pereira dos Santos, who predicted the end of the world on the feast day of Our Lady of Aparecida. Santos was subsequently arrested. Section 6. Cultural Influence The 2012 phenomenon has been discussed or referenced in several media. Several TV documentaries, as well as many contemporary fictional references to the year 2012, refer to 21st December as the day of a cataclysmic event. The UFO conspiracy TV series The X-Files cites December 22, 2012 as the date for an alien colonization of the Earth, and mentions the Mayan calendar stopping on this date. The History Channel has aired a handful of special series on Doomsday that include analysis of 2012 theories, such as Decoding the Past, 2005 to 2007, 2012 End of Days, 2006, Last Days on Earth, 2006, Seven Signs of the Apocalypse, 2007, and Nostradamus 2012, 2008. The Discovery Channel also aired 2012 Apocalypse in 2009, suggesting that massive solar storms, magnetic pole reversal, earthquakes, supervolcanoes, and other drastic natural events may occur in 2012. In 2012, the National Geographic Channel launched a show called Doomsday Preppers, a documentary series about survivalists preparing for various cataclysms, including the 2012 Doomsday. Hundreds of books have been published on the topic. The best-selling book of 2009, Dan Brown's The Lost Symbol, featured a coded mock email number, 2456282.5, that decodes, according to the Washington Post, as December 21, 2012. The 2009 disaster film 2012 was inspired by the phenomenon, and advanced promotion prior to its release included a stealth marketing campaign in which TV spots and websites from the fictional Institute for Human Continuity called on people to prepare for the end of the world. As these promotions did not mention the film itself, many viewers believed them to be real and contacted astronomers in panic. Although the campaign was heavily criticized, the film became one of the most successful of its year grossing nearly $770 million worldwide. Lars von Trier's 2011 film Melancholia features a plot in which a planet emerges from behind the sun onto a collision course with Earth. Announcing his company's purchase of the film, the head of Magnolia Pictures said in a press release, quote, As the 2012 apocalypse is upon us, it is time to prepare for a cinematic last supper. End quote. The phenomenon has also inspired several pop music hits. As early as 1997, A Certain Shade of Green, by Incubus, referred to the mystical belief that a shift in perception would arrive in 2012. Quote, Are you gonna stand around till 2012 AD? What are you waiting for? A Certain Shade of Green? End quote. More recent hits include 2012, It Ain't the End, 2010, performed by Jay Sean, and Till the World Ends, 2011, performed by Britney Spears. In February 2012, American automotive company GM aired an advertisement during the annual Super Bowl football game in which a group of friends drive Chevrolet Silverados through the ruins of human civilization following the 2012 apocalypse. When the whereabouts of one of their friends is queried, it is revealed that he died because he drove a Ford. In 2011, the Mexico Tourism Board stated its intentions to use the year 2012 without its apocalyptic connotations as a means to revive Mexico's tourism industry, which had suffered as the country gained a reputation for drug wars and kidnapping. The initiative hopes to draw on the mystical appeal of the Maya ruins. On 21st December 2011, the Maya town of Tapachula in Chiapas activated an eight-foot digital clock counting down the days until the end of Pa'ak 13, while in Isapa, a nearby archaeological site, Maya priests burned incense and prayed. Section 7. See also. This section suggests some related Wikipedia articles for reading. The suggested articles are 
1. Dream Spell Calendar 2. List of dates predicted for apocalyptic events Section 8. Notes The article is accompanied by detailed footnotes which in this recording have each been read after the first sentence marked by each footnote. Section 9, Citations, and Section 10, References There are references available in the written form of this article. Please be sure to verify information found on Wikipedia using the references provided or cross-referencing the information yourself. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike 3.0 Unported License, available at http colon slash slash creativecommons.org slash licenses slash by dash sa slash 3.0.